Hello and welcome to the ARC Automation Studio. I'm Alan Avery, a Senior Analyst here at ARC, and I invite you to join us as we discuss OT-level cybersecurity for smart buildings. Uh, joining me today is Larry O'Brien, a Vice President of Research here at ARC Advisory Group, and he's just completed a report on this topic. Larry's part of the cybersecurity and smart cities practice here at ARSC. And he has a 20 year background covering process control, process safety, and field devices and field networks. He's also supported many of our end user clients in the oil and gas and refining industries and has conducted several supplier selection workshops. Uh, for the past three years, he's been focused on cybersecurity and smart cities uh, here at ARC, and he's authored a number of research papers, market reports, and articles on the topic. Thanks for joining us today, Larry. Thanks a lot, Alan, for that introduction. Uh, this is a new study at ARC, but it's not uh, based on all new information. We've actually been tracking the building automation system marketplace and the uh, OT level cybersecurity marketplace for many, many years now. Um, just a few words on scope here. Um, so uh, this study is basically taking information that we have from the building automation system realm that we've been covering. Uh, and, and this is uh, a representative list of the, some of the studies and research that we've done in, in building automation. So it includes things like HVAC systems, energy management systems, access control systems, fire systems, video surveillance and lighting control systems. Uh, as well as some other uh, areas that aren't listed here, such as elevator control systems. Uh, and we're also drawing from the knowledge that we already have in the OT level cybersecurity space, uh, which includes things like threat detection and response solutions. Uh, these are solutions that actively or passively uh, try and discover threats that are coming into the OT level networks. Uh, network security solutions are basically firewalls, next generation firewalls, or you know, automation specific firewalls. Uh, cybersecurity management solutions are actually a diverse range of solutions uh, that cover everything from inventory management to other applications. Uh, and then we have endpoint protection solutions, which is probably what most people think of when they think of cybersecurity. That's things like uh, virus, uh, antivirus packages and anti-malware and so forth. Uh, wrapped around that is the services business. Uh, so the cybersecurity services business is pretty considerable. It includes a pretty broad range of suppliers. Uh, so by combining this information together, we're able to synthesize uh, a pretty realistic view into what's happening uh, into the marketplace for cybersecurity and smart buildings. Thanks for that, Larry. I wonder what's changing in the landscape of smart buildings and cybersecurity? Well, there's a lot of changes happening in the landscape of smart buildings today that are making cybersecurity much more of a concern uh, than it has been in the past. Uh, and I just have three of them listed right here. There's more in the study, but the first I want to go over here is remote monitoring. So we see a big push uh, for end user and owner operators, uh, as well as other companies, uh, to remotely monitor uh, and basically optimize the performance of, of buildings or even large numbers of buildings, fleets of buildings, for example. Um, with an eye towards doing things like reducing energy consumption, uh, reducing maintenance costs, increasing safety, or just overall improvement of the customer experience in the building. Um, I say end user owner operators, but, but there's other classes of companies too that do this. Uh, for example, companies that will install HVAC systems, right, or building automation suppliers will remotely monitor uh, their systems in buildings uh, to make sure uh, there isn't an impending maintenance issue, for example. Um, there are some very well publicized hacks that have occurred as the result of, uh, you know, gaining unauthorized access to uh, uh, HVAC system that's being remotely monitored from a remote location. So that's a big con concern for cybersecurity. Um, the other concern is just this overall adoption of all these new technologies that's making things like remote monitoring possible. Uh, and we often put that under the broad umbrella of Internet of Things or Industrial Internet of Things. And this includes things like cloud computing and edge computing and uh, analytics, um, building information management systems. And, you know, this overall wave of digitization is being adopted at a really rapid rate in the industry. Uh, that creates its own set of cybersecurity concerns because obviously, the cloud in and of itself is not secure. Edge computing platforms in and of themselves are not secure. Networks are not secure. 
Um, so that's a big concern. And the other concern is that uh, these technologies are being adopted in facilities where they coexist with an installed base of much older technologies, which uh, themselves create a cybersecurity challenge because you have to uh, stay on top of what potential vulnerabilities might exist uh, in your legacy systems as well. Um, also creates a challenge when it comes to things like inventory management. You know, what, what, what exactly do you have out there for assets uh, that have to be monitored and so forth? That can be difficult for uh, older technologies sometimes. And thirdly, what I have here is this rise of OT level cybersecurity suppliers. So if you're an end user in smart buildings today, uh, it's becoming increasingly difficult to sort out who the suppliers are and what they do. You know, we, we seemingly have a new supplier come on the scene, you know, just about every week with a new solution. So it gets very difficult uh, to keep track of this proliferation of new suppliers. Uh, and are they going to be around, you know, in five years and so forth? So that's a challenge as well. Thanks, Larry. What are the underlying drivers that have been critical to growth in the market? Well, there's obviously many growth drivers uh, for cybersecurity and smart buildings right now. Um, I think the, the biggest one is the rise of operational technology level cyber attacks, and it's really changing the threat landscape out there uh, for a wide range of industries, including intelligent buildings. Uh, you know, the potential cyber vulnerabilities in building automation systems are very well established. We've witnessed many hacks uh, that have occurred through building automation systems. You know, and in many cases, it's not the systems that's themselves, it's the way that the systems are managed, uh, you know, basic kind of cyber hygiene issues. Uh, but these systems are often infiltrated, you know, for whatever, you know, reason or vulnerability that they have, and they're used to cause disruption. Um, you know, these are building automation systems. They're controlling the climate and, and often the safety uh, of people that exist in these buildings. So these are potentially, you know, uh, endangering, you know, human lives, uh, you know, through the building automation system. Um, and they also provide access to other systems. Uh, such as point of sale systems uh, that we saw in the target hack uh, a few years ago, uh, ERP systems, uh, or even things like medical systems uh, in hospitals. Um, the threat, land the overall threat landscape is changing. Uh, you know, we see a lot of uh, attacks. You know, that are simple um, ransomware attacks. Um, but what we're seeing also is that many more of these attacks are becoming sponsored by nation state organizations. Uh, you know, if you look at what's happening in the industrial sector, there's more of a shift towards these sort of uh, multi-phase, very sophisticated kind of attacks where the intruders are there for a very long time before they're detected. Um, so these are the kinds of things that I think we have to look forward to in the building automation sector as well. It is part of the critical infrastructure. Uh, and it does have an impact on human safety. Um, the other driver is IoT and edge-based solutions. Uh, so we listed that as one of the challenges, right? And, and uh, you know, one of the things that, that end users face as far as trying to make things more secure. But also IoT offers uh, some new opportunities, some new options uh, for deploying new types of cybersecurity solutions. Um, so we're, you know, for example, we're seeing growth in these zero trust based uh, kind of solutions that are very focused on the IoT sector right now. Uh, so there's a lot more options out there as well as a result of this new technology, but that's that presents new challenges in and of itself uh, as far as vendor selection and, and what types of products and offerings are out there too, um, which I guess is a good problem to have, but still a problem. Um, and again, the complexity of the landscape of vendors and solutions. Uh, you know, there's just so many of them out there right now. Many in early rounds of, of capital funding. Um, many have been around for years. So it's tough to establish, you know, like I said before, who is still going to be around uh, five years from now. What market trends will have the greatest impact on shaping strategic initiatives for suppliers in the OT level cybersecurity space for buildings? I think it's important to realize the uh, role that standards play, uh, and you want to choose a solution that complies uh, with cybersecurity standards or one that's going to help you conform to existing cybersecurity standards. Uh, one of the things that we notice in the building automation industry is I think, you know, they're 
there really is no overall industry consensus as to which standard you know we're going to follow in building automation. Obviously, at ARC, we kind of lean towards IEC ISA 62443 standard. Um, there's other standards and frameworks out there um, which may also be applicable to building automation. We talk about some of these in the report. Um, but really, um, when you're choosing a solution, you want to assess that the security of the new system components and, and IoT devices, uh, whether they're industrial or not, um, you know, you need to pick something that comes from a supplier that has secure development processes in place to help ensure security in the hardware and the software. Uh, you want to look for some kind of independent third-party testing or auditing that helps to validate that trust. Um, you know, and you want to make sure that your potential supplier uh, complies to recognize standards uh, and best practices. Um, if you are an end user, uh, you're probably going to need more training and support. Um, you don't have the expertise in-house to deal with cybersecurity. Um, the solutions are becoming more sophisticated uh, and need more expertise to configure and to maintain in a lot of cases. Um, I think it's kind of happening both ways, right? We're seeing products that are quite easy to use and, and just kind of set it and forget it. And there's other products that are much more sophisticated um, and other approaches that are, you know, infinitely more sophisticated if you want to take those. Um, in either case, you're going to need more training internally. Um, you're going to need more support from your vendor. Um, and in many cases, the vendors can be good sources of training uh, as well, in addition to some other organizations that are out there. All right, Larry, thanks for joining us today to share your insights on the OT level cybersecurity market for smart buildings. That's all from us at the ARC Automation Studio. If anyone in the audience has any questions or needs additional information, we encourage you to get in touch with the author or a client manager here at ARC. Thanks for your attention and have a great day.